such a fun video today and a longer video than usual because there's a lot of stuff to go over here. This is venison bone broth, smoked venison bone broth. And if you've made venison stock, I would put money on the fact that it probably does not look like this when it comes out of the pot. So there's really only one way that I've found to make stock like that from venison, and we have to use a very special part of the deer. Obviously, a lot of people like to heat up bone broth in a mug. That's great. I'm going to show you how to cook with it too, and we're going to make a brick cap mushroom brandy peppercorn sauce. Here's what we're going to cover. Cleaning trotters, making the broth, the optional remoulage, making a pan sauce. A lot of interesting things to go over in this video. This is kind of a continuation of an older video that was very popular about cooking venison trotters. So I have a whole other video that goes into the nitty gritty about working with these. And this is going to be an abbreviated version that's a little bit more easy if you are going to cook with them for your first time. And really all we need to do here is peel these things like a banana. So just make a little incision and just take all of that skin and fur, free it up using a paring knife. And this is actually relatively easy. It's not that difficult to do. Just use a little paring knife that's sharp and strip that thing down. And like I said, this is kind of an abbreviated version. I actually have a method for cooking the hoof and inside of the hoof, there's a nice little piece of meat, but we're just gonna skip that here, and this is just gonna be kind of a quicker version, and it gets a little bit tricky at some of those joints, so I'm going to take a reciprocating saw, which is a very important piece of equipment here, and I'll just cut that up. You have to use a reciprocating saw because these bones won't fit in a crock pot if you leave them in the correct size. So this might look a little dangerous to some people, uh, it is if you don't have a steady hand. I have never cut myself with a reciprocating saw. Uh, you could use a vise or you could bash them with a hammer. Lots of different ways to do it. I use a saw. Just be careful. Now, the ribs here, we want to use some bones that have meat attached to them. If we just use only bones, the, the broth is going to taste like roasted bones. So I like to add something that has some meat. And these, you can see, we're not going to cut them with a saw because they're too light and it's just too tricky to do. Now, once all the bones are cut up, we're going to put them into the smoker. You could also put them in an oven and just cook them for a few hours. This is just to, you know, coagulate the meat and the proteins because it's going to help us get a really nice rich color and it's going to make sure that the stock is crystal clear. Make sure not to char them. You can rotate them a little bit. All you want to do is get them a little golden brown and roasty toasty. And you can see we have our nice little blend. Mostly this is leg bones, but the most important is that I used all four of the shins from a single deer. So this is just the bones from one single deer. And now we're going to take our bones and put them into the crock pot. And you can see I don't have a lot of vegetables. I'm just going to put celery, a bay leaf, a couple cloves of garlic, and a shallot. I'm not adding a carrot because this cooks for so long, carrots can actually make it sweet and impart sugar. I will add one to the remoulage. I'm going to show you how to make after this. And then we're just going to cook that for 12 to 24 hours. If you want to add a splash of vinegar, some people do. You can do that. I didn't hear. And one note on the heat, you want to keep this on low heat. This was even on low heat, and because a crock pot holds in so much heat, it can actually make it boil when it's on low. So do not do it on high. Keep it on low, low and slow, and you'll still get a nice crystal clear stock. Okay, after 12 hours, I'm going to add some water to this first batch because there's been some evaporation. You could also just strain it at this point, but I like to add, you know, probably like another solid quart to bring it back up to the level that it was at. Now, testing the set, this is kind of like jelly. And we can see how the collagen is coming along by taking a little metal bowl and putting it into another metal bowl filled with ice and a little handful of salt. 
and we'll let that sit and chill, and let's see how we did. So first you'll see there's a lot of fat on here that's all going to have to come off. And underneath it should be nice and gelatinized. Yeah, that looks great. Exactly what we want to see. And again, I've never had this work not using the venison trotters. Now we'll just take all of these bones and take them out. And I have a use for the bones. If you're a person that likes to save all kinds of things, uh, we'll strain this through cheesecloth. That's kind of optional, but I like it especially if you're going to drink it. I also reuse my cheesecloth because that is not very dirty there. Chill that down. And now we're going to remove all of the fat. No fat because deer fat is like chapstick. Same thing with lamb and goat fat, but Venison fat is a little bit more tough to work with. Okay, the optional remoulage. This is a French technique, and if you like to save all kinds of things, uh, which can be a blessing and a curse, this is something that you can make, and I'm going to show you how it's done. I used to do this when I would have, you know, 100 pounds of veal bones, and they got to cook for two days, and they're super thick. We're going to add extra fresh vegetables. You can see I added a carrot here. Then we're going to add something acidic. Tomato is the acidic component of choice here. It's going to help some of that collagen come out. I just had a little bit of tomato puree sitting in my fridge. I'm going to add a good splash of red wine to this too. You can get a little more creative. Then I'm going to cook that for a solid 24 hours again. And this one I'm not going to add extra water. Uh, you could if you wanted, but we're going to chill these both down. Now take a look at this. So the first stock is on the left, and you can see that is... Wonderful. That's exactly what we want. But there was still some goodness in those bones. So now I'll take my spoon and we'll dig into the Remy, as it's called. And look, there's still collagen in those bones. So this is a great like soup base and just a really nice thing to have around if you have the time. Obviously, it is also a little bit of a time investment. But just FYI, if you ever want to make that. Now, of course, you can put your bone broth into a little cup. I like some herbs and a shot of lemon, and that is a great way to have it. But another way to have it is using it in cooking like demi-gloss, because this is so rich in collagen, this can help sauces bind. What we're going to do, we're going to take a little beef tenderloin, and we're just going to make basically brandy peppercorn sauce here. So brown that steak. All you got to do is brown it on both sides, not cooking it too much here. Yes, I cook things in bacon fat. We'll add a little bit of shallot. I'm going to add some brick cap mushrooms that I picked, uh, Hyphaloma subletericum. Cook those a little bit until the shallots get a little color. Then I add some thyme. Then we're going to flame on. Boom. Cook that down. Now we add our bone broth. And we're going to reduce that, reduce that by half, and just keep cooking that down. Then we're going to add a good glug of heavy cream. I actually kind of went a little bit light there. And plenty of freshly cracked black peppercorns. Cook that until it tastes amazing. Add the steak, and we're just going to heat it back up. Baste it with the juices once in a while. And cook that sauce until it's thick enough to coat the back of a spoon. And there you go. This is a restaurant quality dish that you can make using deer feet. Who would have thought? But you just heat the steak up and look at that. That is about perfect temperature for me on a tenderloin. And that is just another fun thing that you can make with bone broth. Well, there you go. Wasn't that so much fun? The full recipe is on my website. Thanks for watching.